Hey y'all, it's Commander Savannah. So I'm here with part four of Shadowrun Returns. So we parted ways with Jake after we dealt with the Halloweeners. We investigated the crime scene, gave William his blankets back after he was pretty helpful. And Dan the Donut Man did not kill over and give us more information we wanted. But it is what it is. So now we're going to go see about finding Coyote and kind of checking out all the patrons of the seamstresses union so the seamstresses union relative to the rest of the barons Tordsville is a neon clothed oasis at its heart is the seamstresses union housed in an old brownstone building on the corner of illegal and opportunity bums huddle together gangers strut the streets and the occasional salaryman comes slumming the union building has been retrofitted rebuilt and restored so many times that it's like an aging starlet wearing too much makeup in an attempt to stay young. The wild ivy growing out of the gutters adds to this effect. As you enter, the murmur of hushed conversation washed, washes over you. The dive bar denizens raise their heads, take your measure, and then go back to their business. This is the kind of place where everyone knows your name but keeps to themselves. Oh, yay! Got a couple more points. Kind of scope it out. So, obviously, I, that's our main bet is that misses right there. That's not how Coyote does it. Hmm. I'm going to mix it up and talk to him first. So, let's see. Eric Mersman. Hey, lady. I got some extra outfits I'm trying to unload. You want first dips? I'll take a look. <gasps> Yay! I don't have that much money. Let's see. Kind of, I'm going to go ahead and scroll to the bottom. Okay, so this is all the basic gear, depending upon kind of, you know, what, I guess, class and everything you had. It doesn't really matter. All right. Mm hmm I'm good on charisma. The, the tourist look. Uh, I want to do the ninja clothing. Add up ninja outfit that grants the wearer dodge plus one. So let me buy that. Uh, I'm going to equip it. There we go. Confirm. Oh, that scared me. <laughs> it's like the screen. Yeah, I guess we should go ahead and talk to her. Uh, Miss Cherry Bomb. Cherry Bomb. A lot of hair. The bartender is a striking elf sporting a perfectly toned body, perfect, perfectly pouty lips, and perfectly tapered ears. Her eyes harmonize, save me, and take me in equal measure, hitting just the right notes for the maximum extraction of tips. She looks at you, sees another elf, and smiles big. Hey there, I haven't seen you here before. What can I get you? <laughs> I like that. I'm into guys, but like she's she's cute, so I could totally see that. Um, oof. I honestly just kind of want to get straight to business. I found a bar tab with Coyote's name on it. She here? She looks worried. No, I think she's away on business. Girl, don't try to play me. Business, huh? Is she a shaman with a name like Coyote? She laughs. No, she shot a coyote once, thinking it was a shaman who double-crossed her. We've been calling her Coyote ever since. Her face falls. She's been missing since yesterday. Some people think the Ripper got her, but I know her. Coyote can take care of herself. She starts to turn away when a man with the face of her survivor and the zeal of a convert tugs at her arm. Hard. It's clear the two have a history. They try to keep their voices low, 
but the intensity of their conversation makes them easy to overhear. Shane, Cherry, you have to listen to me. If you stick around here, you could end up dead or worse. The Ripper is out there, and he's real. The last killing happened just down the block, and now Coyote's missing. They'll probably find her tomorrow in the dumpster without her head. Come on, Cherry Bomb, think. I think plenty, Shane. I'm getting a fr a freakton from UW in neuroprosthetics setting under Ojimans. Ojimans? Oh, I'm a frickin' moron. <laughs> I thought she was doing slame. It's PH PH freaking D A P H D. This is what happens like when you try to go ahead and read a narrate and sometimes you kind of read and you don't think. <laughs> ah. I'm gonna redo that. <laughs> I think plenty, Shane. I'm getting a PH freaking D from UW Neuroprosthetics studying under Ojmans. I still can't say the last part right, but it is what it is. And how am I paying for it? Bartending. Tips. There are faster ways for a Baron's girl to earn that kind of scratch, but I'm not taking them. So what do you want from me? I want what you want. A better life. A better world for everyone. The Universal Brotherhood can give you just that. I've heard this all before. This isn't some trick to get us back together. Things are different now. I'm different now. The Brotherhood. Cherry Bomb's pretty face is hard. Armored in lipstick and low expectations. The Universal Brotherhood is for other people, Shane. Rich Bellevue types who can afford their membership fees and voluntary donations. This isn't about money. It's about uh, binding the world together in brotherhood. Come with me. Attend a discovery meeting. Get to the core of who you are. I heard Lynn Telestrian give talk last night called The New Family of the Sixth World. I've got family right here, Shane. They're drunks and lowlifes and whores, and I'd choose them over any of your brotherhood members. Now buzz. I need to get back to work. With body language that leaves no question that conversation is over, Cherry Bomb turns her back on him. Oof. I don't think Shane took that well. Just like I didn't take PhD well. I don't think there's anything else we can say, but to be safe, I'm gonna just check in with her. Sorry, I got interrupted. Hmm. <laughs> Boyfriend find religion? Her pretty eyes narrow. Something like that. You got a look that says you're not just here for the entertainment. Are you a badge? Nope. I didn't think so. You look like a runner to me. We're trained to spot a bronze the minute they walk in here. Something I can help you with? I have a few questions. Ask away. Tell me about this place. Some come here for booze. Some for companionship. Others are looking for something they can get anywhere they can't get anywhere else. If it's illegal or immoral and it can be bought, sold, rented, or consumed, you can probably find it here. The union seems to attract people like you. Who was that you were talking to? Shane. Old boyfriend. He used to work here. Then one day he saw a billboard for the Universal Brotherhood and that was that. Went to a meeting, made new friends. Moved in with them. I was happy for him. Until he started coming around trying to recruit me. I don't need that trick. Ever hear the name Sam Watts? She nods. Sam was a regular customer and a regular pain in the ass for as long as I've been here. Talked a big game, but he was always broke. As soon as he got any money in his pocket, it went straight to his head. Chips, drugs, or booze. Coyote had a soft spot for him, though. Did you see Sam on the night he died? Nope, that was Coyote shift. Who runs this place? I want to talk to them. That'd be Mrs. Kubota. She's in the back room. You can't miss her. Thanks for the intel. I appreciate the help. Gutter punks have to stick together. Oof, I called someone that earlier. Talk to you later. We got our gear from... Oof, got caught there. Oh my gosh, I got caught again. Alright. See, we talked to the very vivid Cherry Bomb. Got her gear from Eric, so let's go farther back. 
further in the back. Ooh, something's going on. Um, okay, let's talk to Jin Parks. Bubblegum, Jin Parks. The Asian woman's expression reads, open for business, but her demeanor reads, dealer rather than companion. She has a jack on her neck, a gun on her hip, and a chip on her shoulder. She eyes you with a sneer. You look like you'd use some firepower. Something simple. I got guns so smart they practically fire themselves. You looking for tech? Got some of that too, if that's the way you roll. Um, show me what you got. I'm just gonna take a look, cause oh! Mmm. I don't know if, hold on. I could, oh, it's kind of expensive. But it would help me have another, yeah, I don't, I don't have use for drones right now, it's not. Uh, I guess that's the thing too, like med kits would be nice to have. It pretty much cost me like all my money. I can't remember kind of the rate of getting weapons and gear. I'm just going to go ahead and buy it. Uh, might be able to buy, how much are the med kits? Are they a hundred? They're 150. Okay. Yep, there we go. Well, we just better not. <laughs> we better get another healer. <laughs> All right, so Mr. Clue? Mr. Clue. Posted at the doorway to the VIP section is a tower of troll muscle wrapped in an impossibly tailored suit. Whether the product of good genes or expensive aftermarket cosmetic work, the troll's gleaming horns perfectly frame his face, and his polished tusks and goatee accentuate the set of a lantern jaw. Welcome. Please behave yourself. Will do. You get trouble in here often? Nothing a stern look can't usually solve. You have business here? I was a friend of Sam Watts. Know him? Sure. Everyone here knew Sam. Shame to lose a part of the family. There's a sharpness in Clue's eyes. The look of a man who has seen much and earned wisdom at a young age. And your role here, I suppose you often escorted Sam to the door. Yes, albeit gently. Sam was a drunk, but he usually wasn't a violent one. Usually. What about the night he died? He was a bit agitated. Didn't catch the specific. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Didn't catch the specifics. Might have been over a woman. Thought I was going to have to show him out, but I had to deal with a couple of rival go gangers posturing for one of the working girls upstairs. Jake helped Sam out instead. I appreciate you talking with me. Happy to help. So, er, uh, can I slide on in? Is that? Oh, what do you know? <gasps> a dancer. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is how I dance right here. I do a shepherd shuffle from Mass Effect. <laughs> Not even from the first game. I'm talking Mass Effect 2 shepherd shuffle. Continue on to Citadel DLC. <laughs> okay. Uh, Johnny Clean. Mm, I remember Johnny vaguely. He was re he's really cool. Johnny Clean. The man is dressed like a janitor, but is wearing unusually clean overalls. He's tall, rail thin, and has a cunning look in his eye that says he's more than just a maintenance man. Howdy. Name's Johnny Clean. You knew? Yeah, first time. Just getting a look at the place. Well, enjoy yourself. This looks like your type of place. I'm just sweeping up a bit. I feel like we'll hear more from him. A luck potion? What? Noog? Oh, Noog. You look rather unique. Noog. Covered in glowing magical talesmen and fetishes, 
The troll does not seem fully of this world. He mumbles to himself constantly, apparently participating in several conversations at once, but with entities you can neither see nor hear. <laughs> I told you, it's not like that at all. Bring me poof and you shall have it. I am honored, your majesty. That was why I was to use mustard instead of catsup. Forgive me. Jean, I was a fool. My... He looks you in the eye, his other conversations on hold. You may peruse my magical wares and see their glory. Okay. I would like to view your wares. Alright, so if I use magic, I can't even afford a power bolt. Okay, so my main thing will be um, charisma for the sake of etiquette and pistol, rifle, kind of dodge and body points when I can. I think I want to learn just enough magic though to get like armor and at least heal wound because I can't do everything, but I at least kind of want those. I just feel like that's really helpful. I will have to you know, hire someone to get all the other good stuff. Um, see, I feel like with charisma, what I have conjuring. So I feel like that's um, something that would be easy for me to... This is kind of nice, though, because I'm figuring out what exactly is... Going to what? I want to learn... Yeah, I want to learn just enough to... Just to learn that, so we have to at least get two points in there. Fall. Yeah. Yep, two will do. And then that's all I'm going to invest in. I'll have to use somebody else. I guess, aside from that, I'll just kind of focus on weapons. I don't even know if we'll do conjuring. If so, I would probably... I might do haste and slow, just because, again, they're one and one. But, again, I'll kind of play it by ear as I go. Because um, I'm kind of really focusing on my girl being the sharpshooter, but I can also, like, heal you. But that's it. <laughs> well, I don't really have any money, so... This will have to wait to the next area. I don't think... It... Oh, alright. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, they got a top area there. Alright, let's go ahead and talk to the missus. Mrs. Kubota. Mrs. Kubota watches you cross the room, sizing you up as you approach. As you get closer, you can see that she's of mixed race, African and Japanese. Her demeanor says, this is my house. Mess with it at your peril. But her eyes twinkle with a playful light when she speaks. Kombawa, good evening. My, but aren't you the pretty elf? Are you enjoying the seamstress's union? There should be plenty of a woman like you to enjoy. She eyes you closely. Or is this business? Ooh. I just need a moment of your time, Mrs. Kubota. I have topics to discuss. Soka. And why should I help you? I feel like all of these might satisfy her. Sam's like family. I would imagine Jake's the same. And, you know, Jake did send us recommended we come here and then the ripper i'm sure is a concern for everyone but we're gonna again be at the root of it and just talk about sam sam watts i'm looking for his killer her face brightens amused ah so you are the little insurance policy he would go on about when he was drunk his avenging angel who would strike back for him from beyond the grave what do you want to know um <laughs> How well did you know Sam? I knew him. We all did. Sam was a regular here. Whenever he could beg or borrow enough Nuyen to become altered in some way. Drugs, chips, alcohol. It didn't matter to Sam. As long as he was bent. He was always looking for his next fix. He clung to this place like it was his lifeline. And we treated him as part of the family. Even if none of us truly liked him. Except Coyote. So I can't remember if Coyote... It's like romantically interested or just it's one of those a fondness friendship kind of thing let's see because wasn't there a 
Jessica, unless Coyote's real name is Jessica. I don't know. I don't know. Je ne sais pas. Let's see. Did you see Sam on the night of his death? He was here, quite inebriated, as he often was. Coyote was working bar that night, and she informed me that Sam was getting rowdy and belligerent with other customers. When I requested he leave, he refused. A bouncer, Mr. Clue, was off dealing with another issue, so I requested that Jake escort Sam out to the back door alley. That was the last assault of either of them. Why is this place called the Seamstress's Union? During the gold rush years, there was a census, and the politicians wanted as high as a number as possible to gain power and revenue. To bolster the numbers, they decided to include all the working girls, of which there were many to the roles. However, given the times, they could not list the girls' true occupations, so they entered them all as seamstresses. When a girl accumulated enough money to open her own place of business, she named it the Seamstresses Union, so potential workers would know that they would be treated fairly there. And thus, a rich tradition was born. So, you were a former seamstress? No. Perhaps when we know each other more, I will reveal more about myself. For now, enjoy the union. One more question. Can you tell me where to find Coyote? Her face darkens. Would that I could. I have not seen her in two days. She's a smart woman, and quite dangerous. But I fear for her. If she's dangerous, why well, fear for her? Please, if you are what I think you are, you know, there's always someone more dangerous. Her room is upstairs. If you are looking for her, I invite you to examine it. You may be able to uncover her whereabouts. I would not normally betray her privacy in this way, but she's missed two shifts now and cannot be reached on her calm. It is unlike her. If something has happened, I will not have inaction on my, con on my conscience. Here's the key. Well, all right, let's see. Uh, um, all right, let's go ahead and investigate. I think maybe we'll kind of interact here and it'll we'll do another, like, not this transition, but the next one I think will be kind of the equivalent of, yeah, I figured we'd just kind of hop in here. I imagine that's hers. That's just kind of an... Uh, looks a little... I don't know if there's any use, but... Um, hold on. I'm just going to go ahead and... Um, can we just kind of... I mean, is this her room? There's a mid-grade security panel attached to the nearby door. It's set to require a password for entry. So, this might be one of those things, well, obviously if we were a Decker, we could, you know, hack in there, but I don't know if maybe Coyote's room will lead us there. I don't think, yeah, we can't go in there. All right, let's investigate Coyote's room. The stand is littered with action movies and cigarette butts. Don't smoke, y'all. A framed painting of the Chicago skyline, done in stylized silhouettes. Looks like Coyote keeps her clothes in boxes on the floor. Coyote's bed has a diary with several papers sticking out of it. All right, so we're gonna start in order. First page. There's a receipt stuck between the pages and a diary entry. Let's look at the receipt. A receipt for a Browning Max power pistol from Jin Park downstairs with a note saying how big guns on hot women turn her, I'm sorry, turn her on. <laughs> Let's read the diary entry. I came back from my ship to find four of Paco's goons sleeping on our apartment floor. It's getting fragging ridiculous. I want to be with him, with the real Paco. But this cutter dreck keeps messing everything up. I love him, but he's totally different with the gang. It's how I make cash, baby, he always says. I try to tell him he doesn't need the cash. I can support us both with what I make on the streamstress's union. But he still goes on about these runs. 
With these bozos all over my floor, I feel like he's just seeing how far he can push me before I kick him out. I try to be patient, but why does it all why does it have to be all one way? Men, sweetie, it it is what it is. On to the second paper. <laughs> a poem. The paper has a handwritten poem on it and a diary entry. Let's read the poem. Let's just say that Paco should stick to guns and motorcycles and leave the poetry to others. Fair enough. Let's read the diary entry. Sometimes it seems like Paco reads my mind or my diary. Maybe he does the latter. I wouldn't be surprised. Hi, Paco. Ever since last week, he hasn't mentioned the cutters once. He leaves the apartment with a see you in a few hours, babe, and returns later without comment. I don't know if it's really going to help us, help for us to avoid the subject and conversation completely, but I felt better without our constant arguing about it. The last two nights, I've come home from work to Paco waiting up for me, slouching on the old dumpster couch with a novel four inches from his face. I imagine that as I turn the key in the door, he perks up and makes himself look especially studious for when I get the door open. He seems superficially surprised to see me, but I love this little act. Right, different page. There is a receipt and an old photograph stuck between the pages. So let's look at the receipt. A COD receipt for a special order. Five pounds of zebra meat from Maury's Meat Emporium, located near Pike Place Market. Oof, let's look at the picture. The picture shows a young girl with caramel skin and dark brown hair. She has a snake wrapped around her arm, yet she is smiling. The back of the photograph has shadow scrawled on it. Snakes aren't for me, baby girl, but more power to ya. All right, let's look at the last page we can access. A receipt for a wall safe installed near the bathroom door, set to a combination of 342-436. That's it. That's all that was on it. Oh, goodness. Okay. Well. The broken mirror was hiding a small safe. Input the code found in Coyote's diary, 342436. <clears throat> the safe beeps cheerfully in response, and the door opens, or the door comes open. Uh, let's pick up. Oh, thanks. I don't think there's. Oh! Oh, that's right. I looked at the stuff in her bed. I'm a goofball. Coyote's computer is ancient. Probably fished it out of a junkyard. It doesn't even have a data jack, and the cracked display is covered with fingerprints. Tapping the keyboard causes the dust-caked fans to spin up, only to display on screen. Password? Without the password, the only other button on screen is a password recovery option. So again, if you're a Decker, this is definitely your field. I am not, so select password recovery. Please answer three security questions to reset password. Your first childhood pet, so that should be, I'm assuming, shadow. Answer stored. Your favorite musical act. Oh gosh. Uh. I have no idea. Uh, was it mentioned in her diary and I'm having a total moment? I feel like, I don't know, the answer stored. What is the name of your hometown? Is she here from Chicago? Am I gonna have to keep guessing until I get these right? <laughs> okay, yeah, they were incorrect. Uh, okay, so it's definitely Shadow. Because if it's not, then I'll be very angry. Okay, so in her diary, Let's see. Oh, you know what? Her room. Her room in general. I'm a complete goofball. Okay, so Chicago is definitely... 
I might need to look at the room. Hold on. Mm. Let me look at the room. So we've got Chicago there. Okay, hold on. Let's try again. Mm, let's see. Yep, let me try again. Okay, password recovery. Okay, so Paco. So nothing with Sam. I guess it was a fondness thing. Paco is her lover. Not Fido. Not what world? Yeah, so definitely Shadow. Let's see. Um, okay, is it... I want to say... Okay, let's... I'm thinking Concrete Dreams or Starfire. Because we have one and three correct, so it's a matter of just getting number two correct. So Starfire. Okay, question three. What is the name of your hometown in Chicago? Yay! The computer has a basic list of applications. Let's look at her calendar. Three days ago, meet with Delilah about gig. Today, meet Paco for a date at Pike Place Market. Due in 30 minutes. Hmm. Let's look at the contacts. Coyote's contact list has exactly one entry. Someone named Paco. There is no com leak number or other contact information for him available. This does not seem like a very useful list of contacts. All right, let's look at the history. A quick scan of her recent searches shows that Coyote has been reading a great deal about hellhounds. It also suggests more than a casual interest in vintage action figures. Cool. Leave the computer. Well, looks like we figured it out. So something probably happened with Paco. Let's finish off by talking with her because I'm getting, we're getting good time on this one. Mrs. Kubota, how can I help you? Do you know Paco? He's a ganger, a member of the Cutters. He's a good kid in a nasty line of work. I warn Coyote against getting too attached to that type. They don't live long. Preach, mama. Have you heard of Maury's Meat Emporium? Her face twists in disgust. No, I am a vegetarian. Oh, excuse me. To be fair, I think the meat they're offering is a bit too exotic for me. So, <laughs> I love cheeseburgers, though, and chicken. <laughs> uh, did you know Jen Park sold Coyote a gun recently? I'd be more surprised if she had. Bouncers can deal with most of the troublemakers. But around here, you need a gun just to take the trash out to the dumpster. Reach again. Coyote has a date with Paco at Pike Place Market in the next half hour. If you go down there, it might bring me peace of mind. I'll call a cab for you. It should be able to get you there in time. Gambat kurasai. Good luck. Um, so I guess we just... Well, there's no reason for us to go back up there. I'm assuming... Never asked that question? <laughs> uh, yeah, so we'll transition. So I'm going to go ahead and save here. I will wait and do the transition for part five. I hope I said that wrong. We did part three. This is part four, if I said it wrong. <laughs> and then next time we will do five and probably six. We'll see. All right, y'all have a good one. I'll see you next time. Bye.